Hey guys, Steve here. Today I'm going to be building a motorized bicycle. Now I went on eBay and I bought this 80cc motor kit. It comes with everything I need to attach to a bicycle. The only thing I need is a bicycle to put it on. Now I went to Walmart and I just bought a Huffy bike for $120. Um, this kit itself cost me $110 on eBay and that included freight. Uh, it was a 25 pound box, so if you do have the paper shipping, consider that. Now before I get started building, I'm going to show you everything that came in this kit so you know what you're getting. And I kind of set it up in a way of how I'm going to install it, or how it will be installed once it's on the bike. So starting in the back, we have our gas tank, our fuel cover, fuel shutoff valve, our fuel line, fuel filter, our spark plug, spark plug installation tool, our coil to run the spark plug. We have our engine itself. We have the carburetor and the exhaust pipe. Going to the front handlebars, we have a handlebar grip, our throttle, throttle body control with a kill switch, our clutch, Two wires, one that goes to the clutch and one that goes to the throttle. On the rear, we have our rear chain, our rear sprocket, a uh, couple rubber gaskets and uh, metal plates that attach the rear sprocket onto the bike. We have a idle wheel, which keeps our chain nice and tight. And then we have our chain guard. So this is the bike I picked up. It is a 26 inch cruiser bike. It is a Huffy Naluso and I picked it up at Walmart for $119. First thing we need to do is we need to remove our rear wheel so we can add our big sprocket to it. But to remove the rear wheel, we'll just remove the two screws that are on the opposite sides of the bike. Since this is a fixed gear bike, we need to remove this little bracket here. This bracket is actually what is uh, used for the brakes. So looking at our back wheel, here's the main sprocket that comes on the bike. We need to work on the opposite side. So let's flip this over, and we need to remove all the screws that are on here, because we need to remove this arm right here. We have these two rubber gaskets. One goes on the outside, and one goes on the inside. Since these are solid, we need to cut a slice into one of them and we'll cut them in between two of the holes. So we'll take this piece of rubber that we have that we cut and we'll put it on the inside of our wheel and wrap it around the main shaft. Now in between each of these um, spokes is where we're gonna be running our bolts. With one on the inside, we'll take our other one, put it on the outside. We'll take these three brackets and each of them is going to go on the inside of the frame. And then our big sprocket is going to go on the outside. So it's taking me some time, but I finally got this sprocket on. Now, when you're going about it, you need to make sure that you, you're leaving about the same amount of room on both sides, all sides of the shaft. Um, it got a little out of whack for me, so I ended up taking a piece of wood and then I nailed it down. That way I got it on center pretty well there. Now with that done, we can go ahead and we can take our arm and put it back on. So we'll take this little brake, our washer, and our nut. If your arm is hitting your, your bolts here, then you'll need to bend this arm up. And you can do that with a vise and a hammer. After I installed the rear sprocket, I realized I put it on backwards. Um, there is a little bit of a bump here to where this bump should bump away from the wheel so that it gives it more clearance from the, from the tire itself. So I've gone ahead and put the back wheel on. This is just temporarily, I'll probably have to take it off so I can uh, cut a piece of this fender out. But I've gone ahead and I put the motor in. So right here is the, the seat post. There were uh, two little screw holes that allow for like a cup holder to be screwed in there. Uh, I had to remove one of them because the motor sits right there. And then I used a piece of uh, foam to wrap around the post so it didn't get all scratched up when I was messing around. So that's gonna stay in there permanently. So this one worked out fine. Right here is the front post of the bike. There are two bolts that stick out of the engine that you use a strap to strap around the post. Now my post was too fat to use the bolts that stick out. Now instead of removing these bolts, which you can, I bolted on the metal plate that's included with the kit and I use this U-bolt which allows it to fit around the fat post. Now, instead of me taking out the bolts that came on here, I actually threw in some washers and some nuts to kind of lengthen this, and then I used the plate that I would have used with this to rest it on the post itself to take pressure off the engine. Now, I've already installed my chain guard, but the chain is running right here in through here. And inside here, there is a little sprocket that the chain runs around. Now there are three screws that you take out. This one is longer than the rest of them. And that's because the, the chain guard actually bolts onto the back side of that bolt. Now inside, I said, is this little sprocket. To get the chain to go around it, we're gonna use the same tool that we use for our spark plug. 
and it just goes right on there. We put the chain around, put a screwdriver through here, and then we just spin the chain around. Now, when you do that, do not have the spark plug in the engine. Otherwise, the compression will make it so you cannot spin this. Now, the chain comes around right here around the big sprocket. And then we run it through this tension wheel in order to keep the chain tight. Now, this is just bolted right onto the frame, and there's a little wheel that spins with the chain itself. Now, you can put this wherever you want, but you just need to have that chain be pretty tight. Otherwise, if it's too loose, it'll fall off the rear sprocket. The chain that comes with the bike is extra long, so it will fit every bike. To shorten it down, first look for the master link. It looks like this, and you use a screwdriver to push down on the open end in order to remove the link. Now, here's a piece of the chain that I took off the bike. Now, if I wanted to remove a, a link, one, I removed the master link, go to one of the ends, and I actually used a nail set. And what I did was put it on top of one of these metal pieces of metal, and then I hit down on it in order to pop it out. And when it was like that, I just pulled it out with the pliers. And then the links came apart. Backside of the chain guard, just zip tie it to the frame. I drilled an extra hole in order to keep it up and I did have to cut a little bit with a pair of tin snips. Just like on my chain guard where I had to cut it, I also had to cut the fender that came on the bike. Otherwise the chain would be hitting it all the time. Or you can just remove the fender altogether. It's up to you. The back side of the engine is the little spout here, I'm gonna call it, to where the carburetor hooks onto. Now make sure you stick the carburetor on as far as you can and you tighten it pretty well. Don't over tighten it to where you'll bend the metal but make sure that there's no air leaks. Right on the side of the carburetor is this little screw. Now this screw is used for your, when you're idling. So if you're just sitting around with the engine running and it's running kind of rough, you turn it clockwise and it'll give the engine a little bit more gas and hopefully smooth it out. If your engine is running way too fast, turn it counterclockwise and it'll slow the engine down. And that is only when, you're, only when the bike is sitting idle. This right here is a little primer. So if you're starting the bike off for the first day, give it a couple pumps and it'll put some gas into the little chamber on the bottom and help the engine start up. On this side of the carburetor is the choke. When you're starting the bike for the first time in the morning, I push this up maybe a half inch and that's been a good way to start the engine. Once the engine starts running, then you can just put it back down all the way. Now you can go all the way up, but like I said, just a little bit works for me. At the top of the carburetor is where the cable comes in from the throttle. Coming down from the cable at the top, it goes through the cap, the cable runs through the spring, runs down through this little slit, and hooks on the bottom here. You can kind of see it right there at the end. Oh, there it is right there at the end. So the needle sticks through the end, then there's a little C-shaped washer, and then the spring and the cable. And then this all gets stuck in the top of the carburetor. When it comes to the exhaust pipe, it's hooked onto the front and just hangs down, and then it's held on with a couple metal brackets that are wrapped around the post. Now, when my pedals, when they spun around, I clipped this a couple times, so I scuffed out my paint. What I ended up doing was I used a torch to heat up this metal red hot and I actually bent the tailpipe kind of away from my pedals from when they spun around. The top of the engine is the spark plug and the little cap that goes on top of the spark plug. This runs to the CDI. Out of the CDI are there two wires that go to a splitter. Now, two of the wires go to the kill switch on the handlebars and the other two wires go to the engine itself. Blacks go to blacks and the blue and the red go together. Now, there are bolts that come with it so you can strap it on. I just use a couple of zip ties and it actually works pretty securely. Here's the right hand grip. Originally the bike had a Huffy brand one on there, but I had to take that off. What I ended up using was a screwdriver, put a little soap on it, and just stuck it in around there, and I was able to pull this old one off. And it put the new one on. Here's the kill switch on the bike. So if the engine's running, you can just hold this down, and it will turn the engine off. So inside the body of the kill switch, there's one screw that needs to have a hole drilled into the handlebar. Now I just took a little tiny drill bit, Drill the hole right in there, and that screw was able to pop right in there. And that is to keep this from this whole thing from spinning around when you're pulling your throttle. On the left handlebar, I was able to keep the Huffy brand 
hand grip just because it looked better than the other one that came in the box. But I did have to take this off in order to put this clutch on. So I took this off, I slid on the clutch and screwed it down. Now when you push the clutch in, it disengages the engine from the wheel. And once you start letting it go, then the engine starts to grab the wheel and help it start spinning. Now when you have this in, you can push this button and it holds the, holds the clutch in. So if you're sitting at a red light or in traffic, you can push that down and keep the engine disengaged. And once you want to go again, press it in a little bit and it pops back out. Right behind the carburetor is where we run our choke wire through. So we put the little spring on there. That's going to keep it from melting, the cable from melting against the engine. And then we use another spring to put tension on the wire. And then we hook it through here and we just screw down this bolt and we keep this nice and tight. Then when we use our clutch, the spring helps keep it out. Now the engine is engaged. When we push it in, we disengage the engine and we let go again and the engine is engaged. Here's the gas tank up here and we're looking at it from the bottom. Here's the main post that goes across the bike. There are four bolts that stick out from the bottom of the gas tank that hook to little straps that go around the main post. Now the one thing I don't like about these bolts is that they're welded into the gas tank itself. Now if you start putting on these screws way too tight, you could possibly pull the screw out of the gas tank and cause a leak. So when you put these on, make sure they're loose enough yet tight enough to stay on there. Now my gas tank can move with a little bit of pressure, but that's just to make sure I don't rip out those bolts. On the other side of the gas tank is where you hook in your on off switch for your fuel line. Now when I initially screwed this on, this little lever right here was facing on the inside. So what I ended up doing is I put a washer and one of the rubber washers in there to make a little space so it stuck out on the correct side. Then you just run the gas line from there. The fuel line that comes with the bike is one solid hose. You will have to cut it in order to put the fuel filter in there. Now, and then the other line, and if it runs into the carburetor right next to the choke. So you just press that on. If you're worried that these might slip off, you could put a zip tie on the ends just to make sure it doesn't fall off. So overall, this was a pretty easy project to put together. I think it took me about a day and a half to do it. And that's because I didn't think around with this rear sprocket. Um, like I said, I initially put it down backwards and the chain was rubbing on my wheel a little bit. So the rubber tire was wearing down. Um, so the one thing that I would recommend would be buying a bunch of zip ties. That way you can zip all your cables down. That way they're not touching the engine block. Um, the, because of the added weight of the engine, the kickstand is not very happy with the bike now. So that might be my next investment is to buy a more heavy duty kickstand. That way the bike doesn't fall down. Right now I'm just kind of leaning it against objects or sticking it in the tire rack when I park it. And then I end up adding on a milk crate so I can carry my lunch to work. And I just zip tie that down to the, to the cargo rack. And then I added a speedometer onto the bike. Right now I'm selling my first tank of gas. I'm almost out. I think I have a tiny bit left in the tank, but I'm sitting on about 73 miles to my one gallon. So that's doing great. I'm hoping that over time, once the engine breaks in, maybe I'll be able to go a little further. But right now I'm just kind of breaking in the engine. Uh, let's go ahead and let's talk about the gas real quick. And then that'll be it. So I bought a one gallon gas can uh, so I can mix my gas and my oil together. Um, I just went to Walmart and I bought this eight ounce bottle of two cycle engine oil. Now, when I went to the gas station, I poured this into the gas can and then I put one gallon of premium gasoline in here. Now I made sure not to use anything that had ethanol in it just because it's a small engine. I always put premium. So one gallon of gas to eight ounces of two cycle engine oil. Later, we'll switch it over to of a ratio of 20 to one. So we'll have one gallon of gas to 6.4 ounces. Now, Walmart carries a 6.4 ounce bottle, but the 8 ounce is actually cheaper than the 6.4 ounces. So I hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.